So, um, there's a couple of different ways it could impact the industry. Uh, I think that certainly we'll have to start implementing uh, policies in, within our businesses that kind of uh, comply with uh, anti-money laundering laws and KYC policies and things like that. Um, and perhaps that will have some kind of uh, cost impact, but we're hoping not. Obviously, the, the cost whole impact for the operators, both the operators and potentially the customers. But we're obviously we're hoping that uh, we can kind of mitigate that somewhat. Um, so let's uh, be more specific. Do you think in the longer run, will regulation lead to the currency, digital currencies being uh, legitimized or will it hamper growth in the industry? Bearing in mind mm -hmm. that one of the, uh, uh, the resolutions from the BSP is that all virtual cur currency operators will be regulated like remittance centers, which yes. means they'd yeah. have to keep reporting back to the BSP. Right. Um, so I should probably say that I think it's a positive first step. I think that um, certainly it, it, it's an important stride forward because uh, the BSP is actually, I want to say, one of the first countries that um, is, is moving to actually regulate this industry. So that's an important step. Um, I do think that personally I believe that the, the, the policy is written a little broadly because I don't believe that every Bitcoin company is necessarily a remittance company. Um, that being said, again, most of the Filipino Bitcoin startups are indeed engaging in remittance, com in remittance services anyway. So that's, I think that's all right for now. Do you mean to say you'd rather not have a blanket approach to this? Um, I think that one size fits all tends to be a little tricky. And I, I don't envy the BSP because their position is one that requires them to balance a lot of different things. And I, I would say that um, there needs to be concessions down the road, but perhaps for now this is you know, we can work with this. Will it hurt adoption, do you think? I, in, I think that it will actually encourage adoption for now because at least it makes things nice and clear. Uh, let's take a look at where prices are right now. Bitcoin's actually had an interesting run this week. We're seeing yes. prices yeah. plunge because a Chinese trading platform known mm -hmm. as Huobi.com suspended mm -hmm. withdrawals, and that's the second yeah. one to do so yes. this week alone. That's mm -hmm. after the Chinese central bank issued warnings right. over the use of it. In one week alone, it's lost more than 10%. Take a look at that plunge right there. First, mm -hmm. it was a half a plunge right here, and then it really fell off the cliff mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. um, what does this tell you about where the state of where the industry is right now? Um, I think that Bitcoin kind of tends to go through these um, stages of ups and downs and that's kind of normal for currencies where volatility is just kind of a thing that you accept. I think that price discovery happens as a result of volatility so it's an important thing. Um, I think that each government tends to kind of look at it differently. I think that the Philippines is uh, moving towards you know being a little bit more open towards it. I think that China maybe isn't so much. I think that Japan is certainly moving towards becoming more open to it. And I think, um, you know, uh, we'll see which of these policies is eventually the one that will win out. Isn't this a little worrisome, though, the fact that it's susceptible to wild price fluctuations? Um, so as I said, um, the only way that you can have real price discovery is with a certain amount of volatility. So this is kind of just one of the effects of that. Um, I think that in general, Bitcoin has stabilized much more than in its early days. And I'm saying that in a relative sense. Um, but I do think that with more usage and more coverage and you know, with more awareness, I think it'll definitely stabilize even further. Well, here's another way of looking at it. Bitcoin's actually the best performing commodity of 2016. Yeah. If we take a look at where it was or where it's been over the last one year, the chart is, isn't reflecting this, but it says Bitcoin rules them all. 163% up over the last 12 months if you had invested in Bitcoin versus if you had invested in the past. So take a look at where you'd be right now. Right. What yeah. a world of a difference. Right. Um, and now there's a little bit of talk. It could be, you know, turning into more of a safe haven asset given what's going on mm -hmm. across the world. World, your thoughts? Um, I think that we can. Uh, I think that Bitcoin has a lot of characteristics. I think that uh, it, it really depends on what you choose to focus on. I think that um, here in the Philippines, we ch we choose to focus on its value transfer uh, capabilities, uh, which is kind of reflected in the way that the BSP wrote the the governance. Right? Um, we're uh, we're largely remittance companies that are using it because we know that we can use Bitcoin as a way to make um, remittances cheaper for OFWs and that's kind of what we've chosen to focus on.
Um, and I think that's a, that's a perfectly valid you know, kind of area to, to be looking at. Security, though, remains a big sticking point, especially if you're transferring money across borders. Um, I, I would say that security is not a problem of Bitcoin, the technology. It's a problem of the people that build companies on top of it. So um, it's the endpoints that really need to kind of work on their security. Granted, that's something that we've known for a while. So I would say that we've definitely been working on it over the past three, four years. And what's next step for you guys in terms of uh, the BSP regulation goes? Are you, are you looking to just comply? Are you looking to engage in dialogue with the central bank? Oh, I think the dialogue is ongoing. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to. Of course, we have to, right? Um, so we have to. And I, in, in many ways, the fact that this is out now, that means that there is something tangible that we can discuss, right. which actually makes the discussions easier. 